huge round of applause and start chanting, Zach, 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 Zach. Come on, right, let's get it going. Zach, 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 Zach. Give Zachary Levi a big round of applause. What? Woo! Eric Cartel, everybody. Let's hear for Eric Cartel. What's up, nerds? How you doing today? That's pretty good. Uh, was anybody at our dance party last night? <laughs> Shit, yeah. Uh, is this the first panel at HQ for anybody here right now? All right. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Because you got the Fillion panel. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's not here. So, uh... <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for any of you who have uh, frequented and supported Nerd HQ over the years, God bless you and thank you so much. You guys know how much this man means to me and it means to Nerd HQ and the Nerd Machine and really just nerds in general. This man is a sweetheart, a massive talent, and somebody who continues to want to spend time with you and have these awesome experiences and probably auction off a bunch of random shit like he always does. Are you ready for that? <laughs> Well then, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my friend and yours, Nathan Fillion. Look at that hair. Get in there. I, le I, I, I leave you in his very capable hands. Bye. Bye, Zach. Hi, guys. Years ago, Zach Levi came to me at my house. Came and he says, I want to talk to you about something. Came, comes to my backyard. He goes, I want to do this thing. I'm going to call it Nerd HQ. We're going to go to Comic Con. We're going to do that. You can't get a, you can't get a booth anymore. You can't get it. But you know what we're going to do? I want to raise some money for charity. I want to get, but what do you think? And that was years ago. And uh, <laughs> it's been going strong ever since. It's been really, really amazing. You guys have raised so much money over the years. You've helped so many kids. Every $240 you guys raise, and one hour of a doctor's donated time changes a kid's life forever and chances of survival. Like, it's a big deal what you're doing here. And we're having a good time. <laughs> Let's not dilly-dally. <laughs> I'm sure some of you, no socks, no, a little, little sock hats. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have something, in, burning questions inside. You're saying, I need to know, and this is not something I can Google. I need to talk to Nathan Fillion. I need it direct from the captain. <laughs> if it looks like I get off on saying that, <laughs> it's because I totally can't hide the fact that I get off on saying that. Oh, I get so jazzed on these weekends. I don't know what it's like for you guys, but I'm having a ball. <laughs> All right, who's got a question for me? You right here in, in the hat. Hello. Hello, what's your name? Um, oh, sorry, uh, I'm Tony from Florida. Tony, it's very nice to see you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Um, my question is, could you talk about your favorite con experience that we'll probably never see depicted in Con Man? <laughs> <laughs> well, my character in Con Man doesn't have a brother. At my, my, my Comic-Con experiences, I always, uh, I always have my brother with me. I always, he's not here right now. He's shopping for a new mask for his collection. But uh, that's, uh, Jack Moore doesn't have a brother, so I, I think he's, he seems a little lonely to me. I, I always have uh, my brother to share these experiences with. So he's like my best buddy in the world, so uh, I, I couldn't ask for more. Um, there was also the, uh, I had a really great time at the 10-year uh, anniversary of Firefly. When we... <laughs> Um, we brought a ton of us back, and, uh, and I, I've been hanging out with these people. I still love these people. We talk, we chat, we catch up, we do things. It's great. Sometimes we work together. It's a lot of fun. Um, but it's just a kind of a different experience when you get everybody into the same room for that specific reason. And it's kind of neat to look around the table and see these people that I knew from 10 years ago saying, wow, man, like, we had no idea what we were getting into. We had no idea how it was going to pan out. And even when it was looked the darkest, it still actually panned out pretty great. Uh, you guys, thank God, won't let it die. Vodka, all right. Another question. You in the back in the red. And the baby. <laughs> I love his outfit.
So uh, on Castle, you had a lot of the Firefly cast members come back. I was wondering if there was any that you would particularly like to work with again on that show, or if there are any that you wish you could have worked on with on that show. First of all, what's your name? Steven. Steven, what's your son's name? Nicholas. Steven, just going to say, you and Nicholas, your parenting, doing it right. Thank you. Is there anyone on the, uh, on the Firefly cast I'd like to work with again? <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. Guys, sometimes, I don't know, I mean, it, a, a job in the entertainment industry is like any other job. There's, you go to work, you work with people, you work with people, you work for people. There's people everywhere. Sometimes you love them. Sometimes there's one that's a bit of a stinker and you go, God, I don't have to deal with that guy again. That wasn't the issue on Firefly. I had worked for a long time before I hit Firefly. I got to Firefly and I said, oh, this is how it's supposed to go. This is, a, this is an experience where everybody's uh, safe. Oh my God, uh, the whole thing about acting, you are literally putting yourself out there for scrutiny and judgment constantly. And it terrified me when I started acting, but that fear was something I decided I had to conquer. I'm actually a shy person. Did you know this about me? I'm shy. <laughs> I'm shy. Yeah, I am shy. When I get a lot, when I get, especially when I get to a crowd and people are drinking and people start reaching in and start kind of slapping me. People like to slap me on the back. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. No, my, but my friends who know me, don't slap me on the back. But uh, it gets, you're always out there and I have to kind of conquer this thing of getting out there and putting yourself out there. I have to shake it all off and just feel safe. And Firefly was one of those places where I could feel safe because I loved everybody and I respected everybody and I admired everybody. Um, there is, I, I've said this before, I take one friend from every show or project I've done, I have at least one friend who I still call on their birthday, who will come and stay with me when they're in Los Angeles or I go to their city. Firefly, I have 25 friends. <laughs> cast and crew and writers and there was a like a writer creator guy blanking his name but <laughs> when people say oh i i oh i did this project yeah it was really great i loved everybody and everybody was really wonderful and stuff like that i can tell when they're lying <laughs> not a lie i loved them it's and still do i still love them thank you for that doing it right yes you Hi, Nathan. I'm Kate. Hi, um, Kate. Solo. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I loved you as Dogberry in Much Ado About True. Uh, <laughs> absolutely fabulous. Uh, are there any other Shakespeare characters that you would just love to get your hands on and play? No. <laughs> Let me tell you this about Shakespeare. Terrifying. One of those things. I'm terrified to do it. I, this is something I have to conquer. I'm going to push through and I'm going to do this. I called Joss Whedon and I tried to chicken out. <laughs> and he said, hey, man. And he, and he talked me off the roof. He said, you're gonna do, it's just a lark. We're doing this, a bunch of friends getting together and having a bunch of fun. Relax and love it. And I don't have anyone to replace you, so you can't quit. <laughs> Lump it. Um, and, uh, and he was absolutely right. It was, a, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. But Shakespeare's hard. It's super duper hard. Yeah, I know it's English. But it's like you have to relearn English. <laughs> I kind of imagine if you took a bicycle and you say, I know how to ride a bicycle, but if you put the back wheel over here and the front wheel over there and you're still pedaling this way, it's like it's still a bicycle, but you got to learn to ride it all over again. That was kind of Shakespeare for me. Now that I've done it, off the list, in the history. <laughs> Nailed it, I'm out. <laughs> Mic drop. Thank you. Who's up? Who's next? Are you in the back? Oh, way over there in the back. Look, there's a microphone right behind you. Let's start with your name. What's your name? I'm Liam. Liam? I have a friend named Liam. Oh, nice. Well, I want to know that if Marvel or DC Comics offered you a position as any superhero, what would you choose? This is where I get into trouble because I say, oh, I mean, if there's one, I don't know, I guess I'd do so. And then it's in the paper. Nathan Fillion wants the role and he's, and he's pining for it. And he's trying to push really hard and doing all this stuff. Things are in the works. Not happening. I'm going to say this. We're running out of heroes, guys. We're fast running out of heroes. 
but we got lots of villains. I just had an idea. This just came to me just now. You just watched it happen. <laughs> this is how it happens, okay? You've been witness. What if I played a villain in some movie? It could be one of two universes <laughs> where my face is like mangled because I don't know, that's why he wants revenge. But look what he did to my face. <laughs> and then, huh? Someone else with not so bad a face. That's two villains, guys. You're welcome. Put that in the papers. I mean the internet. Showing my age. Okay, who's next? Over here, yes, you young lady in the front. There's a little microphone right for you, right there. My name's Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Hi. Um, I just wondered, when you think back about being Joey on One Life to Live... Which I do constantly. I think back, <laughs> I do, I really do. Well, I was wondering, do you think of it in a good way, like it started your career, or do you think of it as maybe you, you don't want to think about it? I am super proud of all the time I spent on One Life to Live. I am super proud. It, I had that throwing you in with the sharks. They go, so here's the job. Do it every single day. Like uh, on Castle, I spent eight years doing a 42-minute program in eight days. We took eight days to film 42 minutes. We would do 44 minutes in a day on One Life to Live. And sometimes we would pack one-fifth of an episode onto the end of every day, calling it six-packing, so that we get six episodes in one week, and we would store up vacation time for, like, Christmas. Now, they do it even, it's even harder than it was, because they'll say, here's three days of work, all your scenes, do them now this afternoon. And you gotta do it, you gotta do it all. And you go, bang, 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 it's out. I am very proud of the time I spent. The people on One Life to Live took such good care of me. They, I had a lot to learn, and I was unashamed about t turning to the person next to me and saying, so I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> what does that mean? Don't worry about it, Nathan, relax. Here's what I do, this is what Bob does. Here's like a lazy cheat way to do it, but if you're really into it, this is exactly what's going on. They would walk me through it. Oh, that's great. In the work life, in personal life, it was fantastic. Guys, I forgot, I brought some stuff. <laughs> I brought some stuff here to, uh, so some of it's kind of, kind of cool. Like this, for example, we did a little charity thing where we got some sweatshirts with my, my silhouette on there with WWMRD. If you don't know, this is, what would Malcolm Reynolds do? It's a little something you should really think about sometimes. We have also here a Wizard, a Wizard World Comic Con badge with Ray Nearly as a guest, but he's been canceled. I signed, I signed this one. There's some, I have some more of these where I sign it right over Alan's face, because he, because he does that to me all the time. <laughs> like, you son of a, why are you doing that? Well, I signed a whole bunch of them right over his face and now I know why he does it. <laughs> Feels good. So this is a, let me see, this is a sweatshirt. It's a size P, small, small, P, petite, French. It's French. <laughs> and over here, speaking of French, this is all the way from Canada. It is my home country. In here is a soccer shirt, which might not seem very uh, fitting until you do this. <laughs> this is a large, and it also comes with a, uh, with a, with a scarf that I also, uh, I also signed for you guys. So what else do I have in here? I think that might be it. That's it, those three items in here. Who would give me five bucks for smiles? Operation Smile for this. Who would give me five bucks for that? You would? How about? 10? 50. 100. 500 dollars? I remember you. We go, we go way back. 500 going once, 500 going twice. He, he lives for this. 550 going once, going twice. 580. I got, I, I got more stuff, guys. Five, 580, what did you say? $600? 
I got more stuff. All right, $600, that's for you, sold. Your husband's gonna kill you? Don't worry, I'll solve that murder. Guys, I got another, I got another t-shirt. This is another WWMRD t-shirt. This one's a size L. I have, <laughs> I have, this is a Destiny. This is a Destiny t-shirt. I played Kate Six in Destiny, and I'm really rather proud of that. I signed that for you. I have, <laughs> just, like, just like I said. <laughs> I have a Venture Brothers. I don't know if you know this. There's a great cartoon called The Venture Brothers. They're coming out with another season where I play the Brown Widow. That's Adventure Brothers. Then, um, this is actually mine. I pulled it out of my closet. My vote for Murray <laughs> bumper sticker. And a picture of me and Graham. Graham was one of the dwarves, and he's also on uh, Outlander. This is he and I. I have a big crush on this guy. He's a lot taller in person, by the way. Not so dwarfish. Nice piece in here. Nice poster. Oh. Right? Not bad. But this, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is mine. I pulled it out of my closet. Uh, it was a gift that I love, uh, but I can't wear it, uh, I, though I did a number of times. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm a big guy. It really pulls on the crotch. <laughs> when you put on these Darth Vader onesie pajamas, and your significant other says, what side of the bed do you want? You can say, the dark side. <laughs> Comes with a little cape. Safety feature so you don't get choked out. It's Velcro. <laughs> Who'll give me five bucks for this bag? Who'll give me 10? 10? 20? 20? 30? I got 30s. Who's gonna go higher than 30? 75, 100, 120, $200 for the, for the Darth Vader onesie that's been right up against my goodies. How tall, how tall are you, sir? You'll love it. $200, 225 right behind you. 225, 230, 250. 250, do I hear 260? 260, 270? Who's gonna bring it right up to $300? I want $300 for this right now. Right, $300 going once, $300 going twice, and sold. How about another question, because I love talking. You sir, the big red guy, the big red shirt. Hello. Hi, I'm Nathan. You are? Joseph. Nice to meet you, Joseph. Um, I'm a very big fan of the Halo series. Me too. And, and well, yeah, because you were Buck, right? So, that and I play it. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to hear some stories and maybe get your, uh, how was your experience uh, doing Buck? It's come a long way. The technology has come a long way since I started playing Halo, since I started voicing Halo. They said, hey, do you want to be in Halo? Do you want to do the, yeah, sure. I recorded a voice for some random guy. They called him like Sergeant Reynolds. And uh, <laughs> then they said, we got a character. We'd like you to come play this character. I was actually in New York doing the pilot for Castle. So this is eight years ago. They sent a guy to my hotel room to take photos of my face. And he just started kind of going around my face, taking photos from different angles all the way around. He took maybe 12 photos and he said, okay, thanks, that's all I need. And he left. From those photos, they did like a face on the game. It looks like me kind of scrunched up. <laughs> when I went to do this most recent uh, installment of the game, I had to fly to Seattle. They're out in Kirkland. 
and they brought me to this facility where you sit in the chair and there's this giant construct, this big metallic orb like monkey bars around you and it's got 36 those SLR cameras all connected to a computer and you sit in there and you make every facial expression <laughs> you've ever made and each word like make a G sound. No, Nathan, a soft G. Like, <laughs> it was very specific and it took hours. You got dots painted on your face. You had to, all these video cameras are looking at you and you had to read these five lines that have every sound in the human, in, in, in the English language in these seven lines. I had to say it normal, I had to say it angry, I had to say it loud. Very complex operation. Took the better part of a day. When we're done, this guy says, wanna take a look at what we did? And he shows me a little computer rendering of my face. It's not in color or anything, it's just like a blue face, but it's, it is me, like having been dipped in paint. And I said, wow, can you make that like a little bit better looking? And he goes, yep. So that's where the technology is now, ladies and gentlemen. It's the future. Here's what I have. Oh, this is actually a lovely piece. It's me and Morena. Somebody gave that to me ages ago. I signed it near the bottom so it looks like I'm the artist. <laughs> the artist actually, the, the, it, it's a print, so the artist's gonna sign the print, but he also actually signed this print. So the actual artist actually signed the print for you. Um, <gasps> The Undead. This is a little Kickstarter thing. We did a little uh, a, a vampire uh, documentary thing. It's gonna be super cool. I got a Driving Heat uh, castle book. What would Malcolm Reynolds do to uh, sweatshirt in L? A castle pilot script. I don't know if you guys know, they're not making these anymore. <laughs> And a Bluetooth speaker. I, I, I have, there's two of these in, in these random bags. One of them says, louder. I wrote it right on the, and the other one says, turn it up. So I don't know, <laughs> surprise, one of them's gonna be yours. <laughs> Who's gonna give me five bucks for that? Five. Who's gonna be 10? <laughs> we went from 10 to 100. How much? $500, $500. yeah, I needs a speaker. Five hundred going once. Six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars going once. Six hundred and fifty dollars. Seven hundred dollars. I think there might be one more sweatshirt. Did you say seven? You said seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred twenty-five dollars. Eight hundred dollars. That's pretty much two surgeries right there, guys, just so you know. It's amazing. $800 going once, going twice. $850. $900. 900 going once, going twice, and it's sold. Time for, well, how much time do we have left, by the way? 23 minutes, perfect. One more question, right here. Hi, Angel, hey, take that microphone behind you. What's your name? Darby. Hi, Darby. Hi. So last night, with my brother Ricky, we went to go see Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. Nice. Sang along the whole time. Everyone is obviously aware that you have quite an angelic voice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was curious, what is your go-to karaoke song? Okay, I got my job at karaoke. My, uh, my brother went to do uh, karaoke one night at a Boston pizza, a pizza chain in Canada. And uh, he, he, uh, the, the, they loved him and said, hey, if you need a job, he goes, you know what, actually I already have a job, it's really great, but my brother's looking for a job. She, they said, send him down. So I went down there and I sang Bobby Darren's Beyond the Sea. And I sang the crap out of it. <laughs> And that was one of my uh, part-time jobs in university, was uh, working my way through, getting ga trying to get gas money for my truck. I had a big truck, guys. I had a big truck. It wasn't an option. It was, it was, it was the only thing I could get my hands on. My, my uncle, I had $360 
my uncle sold me this truck. Uh, it was a beautiful truck. I loved it. Oh, my God, I love big old farm truck. He said, I'll take 300 for it. Save the 60 for gas, but you're going to have to figure out something to do by Friday. <laughs> I think ate gas. Amazing. Loved it. All right. I got a bag here. Gordon Brothers. I actually, I bought the hat that came in this bag. All right. We have, oh, what's this? <laughs> I don't know who made this. We shoot first. <laughs> it's me and Han Solo. I'm flying solo. Flying solo. Flying solo. Solo, baby. I have, what would Malcolm Reynolds do? Uh, ladies uh, tank top. It's pretty daring. Doesn't even have any seams on it. This is like, oh yeah. The shiny car sticker. A photo of me and Liam McIntyre getting steamy. I have another, oh, this is a Jack Moore VIP experience, Wizard World Chicago, signed by Nathan, not on the face. I bet this goes to one of the Bluetooth speakers somehow. Let's make sure that one of those speakers has, has this cable. And I don't know if you know these, these items. They got little shuttles. All right, we're coming in hot. We don't have time to stop. You got to dock while we fly. Oh, that could be the game. You know those kids with the little... Anara, how you feeling? I'm a little shaken up, Mal, but I'm feeling fine. All right. Five bucks? 10, 50? Who's gonna give me 50 bucks for this pile of crap? $100, 125, 150, $200. 250, $300. I signed every piece of this stuff, guys. It took me 45 seconds. 350. 500 dollars. I'll sign a poster for you. Absolutely. 500 dollars. What did you say? 600. 650. 750. 800 dollars. 850. <laughs> Too rich for my blood. 850. Going once. 950 dollars. I like that she, she checked first. He, he gives it one of these. $950, $1,000. Going once, going twice, sold. Uh, this got a little wrinkled, I'm so sorry. Um, it got wrinkled the day I got it. This is actually from the set of Castle when we were doing a big old court case and you can't have cameras in there so they had like a, a, a court d d doodler. <laughs> and uh, so that's me. That's me on the, on, the, on the witness stand. Looking good. The witness stand was on rollers so they could move it out of the way for cameras and stuff. And, and, and the, the, the attorney was like grilling me and I said, hey, and I pulled the desk and I rolled the whole thing forward. Say that to my face. All right, so I got that. I've got uh, Ray nearly canceled. What would, what would Richard Castle do? That's an XL. Some fan did this and it's actually really beautiful. I signed it so he makes it look like I did it. It's, it's, it's a handsome, more handsome version of me as Green Lantern. And this, this is the crew gift we got for uh, our crew on Castle. I signed it over on this arm, but on this arm, nice and subtle, Castle. It's a micro fleece, it comes up, it, it falls up really small, it's really nice, super warm. 
I got a Castle Storm Season book. I have a Richard Castle Driven Heat. Huh, and a DVD set. They're not making these anymore. <laughs> Will someone give me $20 for this mess? $200. $200. $300? I have. Going once? Is he, is, what did you say? He did say 400. You got it, Captain. 500. 500? 500? 500 going once? $600. $600 going once? $700. Do I hear more than $700? Seven fifty. Seven fifty going once, going twice, sold. What else? Oh, this is a good one. We're running out of time, and I don't want to run out of time because I got some great stuff. And by the way, guys, you really helped me clean up my closet. <laughs> um. What would Malcolm Reynolds do? This one's a size XL in a nice gray. This is a Destiny shirt. So I signed it as Kate Six. I have the uh, Jack Moore lanyard Firefly DVD set. They don't make these anymore. <laughs> and, uh, ooh, a nice piece. Me and some of the important ladies in my life. <laughs> nice big poster of the Firefly cast. But the big deal here, guys, this, uh, this has been hanging in my bathroom since Australia? Chicago. One of these conventions. I saw it and I couldn't resist. Putting on a robe after your shower, very logical. <laughs> Who, that's, this is, I'm gonna miss this, but, <laughs> but I'm keeping the Kirk. <laughs> I'm keeping the Kirk. Two robes and I'm a single guy, I got two robes hanging, I don't need that many robes. So this is going for, let's start at 50. Who give me 50 bucks for my robe? How much? 300? Excellent, $300. 400, did you say 400? And <laughs> Ted's going, shut up. $400 from the captain. 400 going once, $500. $500 here in front. Do I hear more than it's going once? I'll still sign a poster for you. 650, I'll sign the poster for free. $650 right here, going once, going twice, sold. Okay. Uh, oh, I got a, kind of a super cool fan done t-shirt. It says Serenity on it. I got another Malcolm Reynolds. Yeah, Malcolm Reynolds, this is another Malcolm Reynolds. What would he do? Another lanyard. That's me and Liam McIntyre. He thinks things got a little out of hand. The piece de resistance, however. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a leather jacket that I wore in a little movie called White Noise 2. If you're here in America, you might not have heard of it, but uh, <laughs> I was over in London and some guy said, hey man, I love that movie. I said, you saw that? He goes, it was right here in this theater. I said, it hit the theaters here? <laughs> On the back of this lapel, it says one, Abe, hero, number six. That means the hero jacket, it means don't mess this one up. And then they gave it to me and I, I was passing by a door and I, I hooked on something. I, I tore it wide open, but I fixed it, you're welcome. I signed it on the inside, it says, because I didn't want to ruin the outside. I want you to be able to wear it. It says, this was mine. 
Now it's yours, Nathan Fillion. <laughs> this little package is going for $50. Who's gonna give me 50? 800. <laughs> 50, no one? I got $800 going once, going $900, $1,000. $1,100. $1,100. I'm just thinking of all the operations and all the smiles. $1,100, $1,200, $1,300, right? I mean, I like the jacket, but $1,300 going once, going twice, and it's sold. This is all sold, right? I can't resell that. This is another one. I got another, I got another jacket, guys. This has like, this has the DVDs, it has the comic book, it has the Malcolm, what would Malcolm Reynolds do? It has another shirt. Oh, nice. <laughs> PDX brown coats, that's really nice. Um, got a DVD set, I got a comic book, and I have another of the crew jacket. I bought a bunch of these. When, when we, we order them, we have to count how many crew we have and whatnot, and you say, how many extra do you want for your family? I grabbed 10 extra of these. I've given almost all of them away. The remainder are here with me now. Who's gonna give me, for the T-shirts, the comic book, the DVDs, and the castle crew jacket? I signed it, I signed it all. 50 bucks? One, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, $200, 300, 350, 400, captain, 450 from the captain, $500, going once, going twice, 550, going once, going twice, and it's sold. Well done. <laughs> So relieved. Another question, perhaps? You, right here. Hi. I'm What's your Ashley. name? You're, you're what? Ashley. Hi, Ashley. So, what are like the most difficult scenes for you to prepare for? <sighs> I'm always finding it weird to make out with people I don't know, <laughs> and they they always put that out in front, and I I don't know why. We could always theorize, but. I guess if you, if you start working with someone and maybe you don't get along or there's just a chance for something to mess up, then you gotta kiss them after that. Maybe, I, don't know, I don't know why, but they always put it right in front. So, hey, everybody, welcome. Strip them down and start making out. <laughs> it happens. It's weird. It's always weird kissing someone I don't know. It's not romantic. It's not intimate in the least. It's kind of calculated and choreographed and there's like 25 big dudes standing around you just <laughs> looking. Honestly, they're not, well, there's one guy kind of looking. He's looking through the camera, right? And there's another guy looking. He, he, he's like composing the shot. He doesn't care what you're doing. He wants to know that his shot is all, everything, the light, the, I can't see a cable in the background. He's he got stuff to do. He's not, not even watching. This guy pulling focus. He, he just wants to know how far away you are. Are you leaning in? Are you coming back? You leaning in? You coming back? That's all he does. They're kind of just standing around waiting for you to do your job so they can do their job. Once you're done, they gotta move these heavy lights from this side over to that side. Everybody's got a job to do, just that mine's making out. <laughs> it's weird. But I guess I'd prefer that to lift them those heavy lights. That can't be easy. Uh, another one of these? Oh, here we go. There is a shirt. Oh, it's one of the shirts we did for charity. It's the I Shoot First shirt. This was a limited run. They're not making these anymore, I'll tell you that. That was a limited run. We did that for Charity Water. We have here a Venture Brothers shirt, because I did the Venture Brothers. We have here another Venture Brothers shirt. We have here, this is mine. This is mine. I went to the University of Alberta. And that's my, uh, that's my old university. That's where I went to school. Signed it for you. I also, had the pleasure of working with the Muppets. 
I gotta tell you, this shirt's really soft. It feels like it's been washed like a hundred times. Really, I don't wash my clothes that much. <laughs> and this. <laughs> Do I love it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have I worn it? Yes. Does it have the same problem as the Darth Vader onesie? Yes. But it's got this. I am the knight. I know, is that, is that a fallout too? This is mine. I wore this a lot. For the shirts that, yes, throw that in there. Absolutely. For the shirts and my onesie. 50 bucks? 200? Who said 200? Wait. 200? 250? 300? How much, buddy? Four, you stop. He's just, I think he's got like a Tourette's. 400 for the captain. Who else? 400? 500? $500, and this could be you. $500 going once, going twice, sold. Too late, sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Five minutes, six minutes left. Can I auction off another one? Is that cool with you guys? Looks like this is the, this, let me see what's in here. Okay. Oh, that's the other, okay. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I've got a shirt, it's a sweatshirt, it's a Malcolm Reynolds, what would Malcolm Reynolds do? I've got <laughs> Joe DiMaggio. It's me and Joe DiMaggio. I'm trying to take a bite of his face. He says, Nathan, I love you and your mustache. And I said, I know. <laughs> Joe DiMaggio, very nice man. I got a Richard Castle, uh, uh, Derek Storm, Think, this is a really nice little piece of fan art that I really liked. I was up in my house for a little bit while. And then I said, there's a lot of pictures of me up. I'm gonna take down a couple. <laughs> so now I'm down to 30. Uh, I'm a big fan of the chive. And somebody sent me this. I kind of love it. That was mine. Now it can be yours. It's the other Bluetooth speaker. I'm gonna put that in there. And from this other bag, this is the last one, guys. There's no more after this. That's my Castle Crew jacket. Signed it down there on the sleeve so it'll be subtle, but you can like, oh, what time is it? Oh yeah, Nathan. <laughs> Will someone give me 50 bucks for this stuff? 200. 250? 300? 400? 400! $400, 450, 500. That, by the way, that Bluetooth speaker will play any music you like. Anything you plug in there, it'll make it louder. What did, what did we say, 550? 550 going once, 550 going twice, sold. Get time for another question. How about that? You, sir, right in the front. I like your Sunny Dale shirt. What's your name? Uh, Hen. This is an Israeli name, so it's... It's very nice. Uh, thank you. Uh, you have a big fan base there in Israel, so if you're, I don't know, in the way, uh, I don't know how. So if I get to Israel, just call them. Yeah, just call. call us. We're big fans. Call us. Yeah, yeah. It'll probably be a parade for you. Sure, I'll we're, do that. We're I'll a very small country, so... Uh, uh, so, uh, you played Caleb. I did. As a villain. Yes. So, uh, do you like to play villains more or do you like to be the hero? I mean, good, uh, good question. Um, I learned a lot from Joss Whedon. Um, a little earlier in my career, I learned, I, I was kind of 
having trouble uh, reconciling how good I, I felt like I had a lock on drama and I didn't have a lock on comedy. Um, I, have, I was on a, a sitcom for a little while. I had some successes, and my last season on there, I, I tell you, I wasn't happy. I wasn't impressed with my performance. It was really not that great. I was like, what's going on? I realized I was trying to be funny. I was trying to make people laugh, rather than just trying to be honest and truthful, which is what I do in drama. Why does it change for comedy? It shouldn't be honest and forthright and believable. And instead of trying to make people laugh, just let them laugh at you. And I kind of came to that realization. Joss Whedon helped me because he said, there's no difference between a hero and a villain because the villain thinks he's the hero. <laughs> he doesn't think, yeah, I'm the bad guy. No, he's like, I'm doing this because this is right. This is what's got to happen. For whatever reason, he thinks he's the hero of his own story. When I realized that, when, well, <laughs> when he told me that, <laughs> I did, I did this, which is something I did all the time working with Joss Whedon, I did this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. Now I get it. All the time, that was me and Joss Whedon. We have a minute and 20 seconds left. What do you guys wanna do? Want to keep chatting, or do you want to do you want to do another thing? One more of those, or one more question? One more auction. Put that anywhere. In this one, we have what would Richard Castle do? Gray hoodie. We have a Richard Castle book. Driving heat. By the way, guys, don't heat and drive. Some fan art I signed. This is <laughs> yet another compromising picture of Nathan Fillion and uh, Liam McIntyre. And Liam McIntyre, he's here this weekend, so we can, uh, you can get him to sign that for you. Another uh, badge for Comic-Con, another fan art. I'm busy. Pilot script for Castle, they're not making these anymore. And I'm gonna throw in nobody wants that. <laughs> Everything that's in here. We got more fan art, yet another pilot script. So you can you can send one straight to eBay. <laughs> and a what would Richard Castle do? One more hoodie. That's two hoodies. That's like a double bag right there. What's in the bottom here? What's this? Flux! Firefly Flux game. Piece of Firefly chocolate. Maybe I should keep that. And another badge. 50 bucks? 200. $200. $300. 350. Zach? I'm just kidding. He already has it all. $400, someone said? 400? 500? 550? 600? Going once, 650. 700. 700 going once, 750. $800? You are way too much. I love you and your mom so much, I can't even take it. Linda and Susan, your mom, everybody. These guys are some of the most generous people in the world. I think going once, going twice sold for $800. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please give a big round of applause to Nathan Fillion. I love you. Was that fun? You're damn right it was. He's just so sexy. I don't know what he does. He doesn't age either, vampire. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all of your incredible generosity. Anybody else win any of those little auctions he was auctioning off right there? Yes, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you all for your generosity. You rock. Uh, thank you again, Nathan Fillion, for being a Nerd HQ hero. Uh, love you guys. God bless you guys. Have an awesome con, an awesome HQ. We hope you see you around this weekend. Bye! Bye.